Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, embittered Enugu state governor summoned security operators, accused them of negligence, claiming he mobilized them after receiving intelligence report about herdsmen attack. Northern Governors Forum advocates restoration of civil authority in communities recaptured from insurgents in the Northeast. A Nigeria Labour Congress seeks improved workers' welfare, demands review of minimum wage and a permanent solution to the lingering fuel scarcity. And it's not over yet as South Africa's court rules as President Jacob Zuma has a case to answer on corruption. On business news tonight, federal government reduces frequency of meetings of boards of statutory corporations and government-owned companies. On sports news tonight, former FIFA World Footballer of the Year, George Ware confirms he will run for president of Liberia for a second time. We begin tonight with the deadly invasion of Nimbo community five days ago by suspected herdsmen, which left many people dead and scores injured. The governor of the state, Mr. Ifai Uguai, in an emergency meeting today to post-mortem the attacks, blames the security operatives whom he alleged he had mobilized, having received intelligence report on the attack. He said the officers failed the state and the nation and must explain to Nigerians why their action should not be seen as sabotage. Those present at the meeting include the Deputy Senate President Ike Kweramadu, some members of the National Assembly, members of the State Executive Council and members of the security operatives themselves. Before now, Nimbo community was a slightly unknown village in Uzowani, local government area of Enugu State. Indigenes of the area are known for farming and that they've done for decades. This week they were brought into limelight, albeit under negative circumstances as they were allegedly attacked by herdsmen. Now the governor is bitter. He says he got wind of the attack, summoned security operatives to a meeting to prevent it and mobilized them. But the operatives failed him. Let me also state that the state government, of course, as usual, did our best in terms of logistics for this deployment. After receiving these assurances of deployment to Nimbo, I felt quite confident as governor that we have done everything possible to forestall an attack on Nimbo. What happened between 6.30 a.m. and 7.30 a.m. on Monday, 25th April 2016, despite assurances from the security agencies, only the security agencies can answer this question. All security agencies in the state are hereby directed to continue to ensure the lives and property of the people of the state and all its residents are protected. The governor goes on to say that the closeness of Nimbo community to Benue State has kept the people always on the alert, but that this attack has shown clearly that the operatives cannot be trusted. Let me also state that the state government, of course, as usual, did our best in terms of logistics for this deployment. After receiving these assurances of deployment to Nimbo, I felt quite confident as governor that we have done everything possible to forestall an attack on Nimbo the night before this carnage took place. I got security information from Uzo Wani, the local government transition chairman, Honorable. Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Omboya, that such an incident is likely to take place in this space, I immediately summoned a meeting of the State Security Council meeting, which commenced by 10 p.m. of the same night. The meeting was attended by the following. The Garrison Commander, Brigadier General Ufemi Akinjobi, who normally represents the general officer commanding its two division of the Nigerian Army, the Commissioner of Police, Samuel Dweke Chuku, the State Director of the Department of State Security Services, DSS, Mr. M. Abul Malik, the State Commandant of the, Na the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Mr. Lars Steven, representative of the Nigerian Air Force, Federal Safety and Nigerian Prison Services, who attended as observers. From the side of the government where myself, the governor, the deputy governor, the secretary to the state government, chief of staff, 
the chairman, Enugu State Traditional Rulers Council, Igwe Ambassador Lawrence Agobozo, and the Honorable Attorney General of the state. Since the attack occurred, Nimbo community has been a mecca of sorts, visited by the Inspector General of Police, the Governor himself, and his cabinet members when the magnitude of the attack was revealed. From Plato to Nasarawa to Benue and even parts of Delta State, the suspected herdsmen have been on murderous rampage, killing and ravaging communities, unchecked and unrestrained. However, it appears the attack on the community in Enugu may have finally awakened the nation to the potent threat posed by this emerging menace. In the meantime, the security operatives themselves have refused to respond to the governor's accusation, claiming that their office is regimented, which means that they are strictly controlled and take instructions only from higher authority. Those present at today's emergency meeting are the state director of the DSS, Mr. Abdul Malik, the garrison commander, Brigadier General Olufemi Akinjobi, and the commissioner of police in the state. On the day of the incident, the Commissioner of Police had claimed that the attack was carried out by hoodlums, not herdsmen. The security chiefs, according to the governor, failed to act in the interest of the community despite having prior intelligence on the herdsmen invasion. The Northern Governors Forum has condemned in strong terms what it describes as attempts by some leaders from the southeast to link Fulani herdsmen to the recent attack on Nimbo community in Enugu State. Breaking journalists at the end of a meeting held in Kaduna State, the chairman of the forum and governor of Borno State, Kashim Shatima, and the governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yari, expressed concerns over the allegations being made against the Fulani herdsmen. The governors, while condemning the recent attacks in Agatu community in Benue State and the recent killings in Enugu, called on security agencies to fish out the perpetrators. We have a great national challenge and we want to call on all and sundry to come on board and let us solve our common challenges as a people. We have challenges in this country. We should unite as a people to confront common challenges keeping insults on President Buhari or on the Polani race, believe me, will not in any way advance the cause of common good. Anybody going through the internet must have seen a lot of insults hold at every Northerner, which is very, very condemnable. We condemn what happened in Inugu. In Agatu. In Agatu. As one Nigerian leading journalist said, one life lost in cold blood is as gruesome as millions lost in a pogrom. Let's not talk about number. The sacredness of human life is so important, is so irreplaceable, that we should unite and find solutions and avoid demonizing one another. The governor of Borno State and, of course, the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. In the meantime, the Northern State Governors Forum has commended President Muhammad Buhari and the military for their continuous fight against insurgency in the Northeast. At the meeting in Kaduna today, the governors appealed to President Muhammad Buhari to restore civil authority to the affected areas to ensure the safe return of internally displaced persons. This, according to him, includes the restructuring of public institutions and structures such as local government secretariats, police stations and hospitals, which were either partially or completely destroyed by the insurgents. Well, the federal government has condemned attacks on journalists in Africa. Speaking in Abuja at the 2016 Federation of Africa Journalists Conference, the Minister of Information and Culture, Mr. Lai Mohammed, says that the present administration does not pose any form of threat to media in the country. He assured the media of government's commitment towards the safety of all journalists in the country and called on media establishment to ensure the physical safety of their agents. On his part, the president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, Mr. Abdul Wahid Odushili, commended the delegates of the Federation of African Journalists for upholding the unity of Africa. 
Nigeria views international declaration for the protection of journalists as a positive step and strongly condemns attacks targeting journalists in the course of their duties. This administration sees the media as a partner in progress and has never even contemplated harassing, not to mention killing of any journalist. As a matter of fact, I remember in Doha, I said, if anything, it is this government that is at the mercy of the Nigerian journalists. <laughs> the media represents the, the ears and the eyes of the world. Any attempt to silence it through the harassment, arrests, detention, and murder journalists is akin to making the world go blind and deaf. I can report to this Congress that not one single journalist has been detained or harassed in Nigeria today. I must commend you for ignoring the campaign of calumny for upholding the unity of Africa because this impressive turnout is an affirmation that Africa, we can hold our own. Africa, we can, we, we, we can take decisions on our own without recourse to any external influence. In part two, after the break, we will be examining the option of raising the bar on internally generated revenue for the states, plus the clamor for new minimum wage by labor unions. Stay with us.